Yeah. Drew, whenever you're ready, go. Alright, we're back right here. We're in the back. Okay, Dustin, you got it ready? You ready to go? In the green room with Rocks. And we're talking with Heavy. What do we have here? Introduce yourselves, guys. Jackson? Subs, trauma. <laughs> and he's a drummer. The guitarist, Jackson. I'm Mark, I play bass with Head P. Right on. Thanks for coming around, guys. You guys want to sit down and relax? No, really. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I can you sit guys, down, but I want to relax. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. sucking me out here. It's a fucked yeah, up couch. It's getting sucked up. It sucks well, you in. That's not the first Suck time it. I've sat oh. on this couch. I'm not playing that tonight. No, we're not playing that. Yeah, we are playing that tonight. Oh, what, suck, suck it off? Yeah, yeah. Oh, suck it off. off. Okay, gotcha. So when I listen to you guys, I got, I got the truth rising. Now, that's a really politically charged album. Is this an ideological thing in your music, or is that something that you just did to that album? Are, are you talking in terms of the lyrical content of the record? Yeah, a lot of that. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. I'm really glad you brought that up, because this is a guitarist, he's the bassist, and I'm the drummer, so we don't actually write the, write the lyrics. I can't really comment so much on that. What do you have to say about that, Mark? Well, that was a phase that the band went through. We were really into the Yeah, yeah. And followed that for a few years, but then we kind of just moved on. Truth is what it is. Nobody knows what a real truth is, least of all us. So now I would say Jared's lyrics on the last album that I'm probably to make it more personal, more close to him and his own personal evolution. I uh, like used the quote signs to make words stand out. <laughs> you know? So uh, it was more personal album this time. Truth Rising was what it was for four and a half years ago. Right. So, so he's in charge of all the lyrics and stuff. You guys don't really have any no, no, we don't. Jerry writes all the words. So how has your music then changed to an album? What one was the first album? The first album, we had a, an EP came out in 96. It was technically our first album. And then our first major label album came out in 97. We had a lot of songs that were on. Excuse me, kids? <laughs> <laughs> is that blackout? Grown up stuff. No, it was we'll get you in a second. No, it was a self-titled album, then we had Broke, and then we had Blackout, and then we got dropped by the major label, and then oh four we had to reinvent ourselves with Jackson and Jeremiah. Who so wanted to start over here? Hi. I was twelve when I joined the band. <laughs> yeah. So you guys started after that point. Is that right? Simo! Okay. <laughs> I started after we joined the band. Yeah. I started playing guitar yeah. actually like right the day I joined the band. <laughs> yeah. well, well, we're just, I just figured out the, 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 the chord. What, what year did you join? Uh, 2003? 2003. 2004? Uh, two soup cast. Uh, no, I was in 2008. <laughs> oh, okay. So. The reason we got Jackson is we, we had no guitarist and my roommate at the time, my favorite story. Kept telling me, yeah, I heard this kid playing head PE songs better than the guys in head PE ever did. Oh, no shit. Yeah, so I ended up hooking up an, an audition with Jackson, and he came down and to Jared's apartment, and we're jamming. And the only thing I remember commenting on was, like, he rules, but he's just he doesn't so much vibrato. And he later tells me how it wasn't vibrato. I was just nervous as hell. But from that point on, he did the job of two guitarists, and there's been more than seven since. So there was two guitarists. Yeah. Right. And now there's one guitar. You yeah. can feel that. Oh. Yeah, well, before me, there was uh, one guitar player filling in because the, uh, the second one was one of the, the, the original members. He just went parted ways. Yeah. So there was a short period of time where they did have like, one guy sung male, but then he parted ways the band as well, and that's what led them to the whole uh, guitar player. There's a lot of farting went on back then. Partying and then parting. Yeah. Parting, yeah, I mean, that's a big part of your music. You know, a lot of, a lot of style is about... Well, there's politically charged stuff, there's a lot of social change, and there's a lot about partying, too. Oh, totally, you know, we, we, we talk about politics, and then tits, tits, and bong rips, you know, it's, it goes from <laughs> this to that, and right back to politics, you know, we, we cover the spectrum. I think it's interesting, you guys can, can say, you know, you can have fun, but you still gotta be serious about the world, you know? What do you think about that? It's true, you can take life seriously, but you shouldn't take yourself too seriously. I read that somewhere. I was trying to sound all philosophical. Oh, you had him gone. You should. <laughs> what, what did you say? You got a Reader's Digest or something? Yeah, that's something I found in the Sports back. Illustrated <laughs> swimsuit <laughs> issue. Playboy. I read it for I read it for the articles. I went to Spotify. I looked at you guys, and they said reggae, rock, metal, all this stuff. You guys incorporate a lot of different genres in your music. Uh, are you guys all have backgrounds with that, or you, how does that how does that work? Man, I mean, that's kind of unique. 
Well, we all had. I grew up in a, in a rock background. So I'm about three times as old as these kids, so I grew up in a three times a classic, classic <laughs> rock era. And then later on, I actually got it introduced to reggae by our DJ at the time, DJ Carter. He came from a reggae background. He used to play with Sublime for a while. So oh, really? He introduced me to a whole new style of music that I'd never grown up. One second, sorry. Uh, you gotta start again. We, no. Better, with more feeling, feeling right now. More feeling. feeling. Come on. Feeling. I want to believe it. I want to believe it. Come on. Bring the fire. <laughs> Actually, really just did yeah. five minutes ago. <laughs> All right, let's start again. What are you guys' names? Home <laughs> girl. <Sure. laughs> I, I got to charge that for a while. Let me just make sure this show. Yeah, you charge it for four hours. Now you use it for about yeah. three minutes, and he's got to charge it. Again. Okay. <laughs> Chargers. I just want to make sure that we're getting it. I've had issues before. We have not gotten it. Well, we're good now, right? Your laptop's working okay? Yes, thank you. So I can turn it down. There we go. Okay, so we're going to try it here. Yeah. Sonic waves keep represented digitally on a screen. Block for me. Is that the Galaxy? Is that the Galaxy S10? Hey, one quick pick of the band if you guys want to look up here for a second. It drew. <laughs> the Galaxy Note. Yeah, it's working. Oh, the Note. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Product placement. I would hate to waste you guys time. And then Oh, it wouldn't be the first. Yeah, Our time has already been wasted for the most part today. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> We're very familiar with the on-ramp to, what is it, the 470? <laughs> 470, exit 34? Oh, yeah. dude, yeah. I-70. I-70, yeah. that's what it is. No, that's it's 470. Oh, 470 okay. East. We know oh, it, man. Okay. We've been, oh, we've yeah, been there. Yeah. 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 That's right. What happened tonight Wait. with the bus? Oh, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's easier for me. Thank first you. day, yeah. like, we're supposed to get this thing started. Well, Mark didn't even make it there. Uh, Make it to Denver the first day. His flight got delayed all the way to the following day. Uh, I showed up to a broken bus that was like broken down 13 miles away, so I had to try to finagle a ride to the bus. Spent like you know four or five hours at the airport until we finally up, went Jared? to go start looking for the bus, and that's where the bus has been ever since. Actually, we've been playing shows and then returning back to the broken down bus. Bus is still broken on the down. Honor. Bus is still broken down. Oh my god. Have anything you'd like to add? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tomorrow we're going to Grand Junction. Uh, we're going to take the minivan, and then afterwards we're going to drive back here to the bus. Yeah. <laughs> and then, to the and, broken bus. Yeah. And we have a show in New York. We're going to take the minivan there, and then come back to Denver with the buses. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding. That's kind a mobile, mobile kind headquarters. Of, kind of. Is it a we're just kidding about the New York part. Yeah. Yeah. I think everything else is true. Yeah. It wouldn't be far off. Hold on a second. It really brings a whole new meaning to a mobile headquarters. So, so a friend of mine out there who listens to a lot of music said there's some issue going on with Juggalos and um, what, how do you guys relate to that? Is there something going on with them being a gang and everything? Do you guys relate to Juggalos or do you what's, spend what's, yourself on that? What's a Juggalo? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What's a Juggalo? What's a Juggalo, yeah. I don't know. Gangs? <laughs> I don't know. There was, there was a bit of a weird situation that happened with the FBI, I guess, classified the Juggalos as a gang. Yeah. So I guess because we played for some of this market or whatever in the they industry, considered that now it's whatever. So I guess your question is, how do we relate to it? We really don't. I mean, that's a group of people that I can't even put a, a W sign up. Never mind. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, man. I don't, I don't know anything about it. Oh, dude, this guy's a Jordy dog. What you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Straight up out of the UK. Yo, tone that yeah, shit. Yeah, that's oh. yeah. With the original gangsters back. Get all up in that. Yeah, we got all up in this. What's the matter, Joe? Just take the mic from him. That's what I did. Right, well, <laughs> what was the question here? Were we still talking about the bus? <laughs> Probably in some weird way. I'm sure it relates. Yeah, yeah so anyway, we, you were asking if we were gang affiliated as well? No, not at all. It's just uh, they, there was some issue going on with Juggalos, and somehow. Uh, <laughs> My friend outside there, outside there said that you guys were related, related to that. So. Well, we've done tours with ICP before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. ICP, yes. We have an interview or is this a restaurant series? <laughs> 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 well, you know, hey. Oh, there you go, thank there you, you so go, much. dude. Hey, thank you, man. Well, I noticed that you were caught, you know, 
Eighteen percent gratuity. There it is. Let me tell you. Raging hard back here, dude. No, that's something we used to take seriously. And the clubs that don't allow bottles on stage, that would be filled with great use. You know, like sit up on stage all night and then wonder, wonder why you stagger off and something in the water. <laughs> so anyway, what, what about water. gangs or buses? I can't remember what you guys are. Uh, actually, I don't want to talk about gangs anymore. It's just an issue. Or oh, yeah. issue that someone yeah, but seriously, we just played, uh, we did a tour with ICP. Yeah, okay. And then a, tour, a couple of tours with Twisted, and they're on Psychopathic Records, which is the leader of the whole Jungle Love movement. Uh, that's not the case. Yeah, I understand that. I can't even stand wearing Guy Liner or Manscara, so I don't really associate myself with part of that scene anyway, so. I may be a bit of a gang member myself, you know, but that's why they are. Okay. Jordy so Dog straight up as you type. They're not with jugglers at all. Before the technical difficulties, you talked about association with the band Sublime. I'm kind of interested to if you expand on that a little bit. Well, when we got our DJ, DJ Carter, right at the inception of the band in 94, he was a punk rock DJ and he used to get kicked out of clubs because he'd get hired to spin records and they want dance music and he'd spin punk rock. And he also played on a, a, a lot of Sublime, uh, one Sublime album, we used to do a lot of shows with him. And Robin the Hood was their second album, he did a lot of DJ work on that. You can actually look at Bradley Knoll's credits, there's a point where he says, Where's Doug? Question mark, and now it's our DJ. Right on. So we had a, because of association with him, that's the goose. Speaking of oh, association, the there he is. The goose is here. There he is. Gangs. This is that, this our tech, Goose, he's from Indiana. Hey, dude. Oh. Yeah, you're about to move to Indiana. So, our DJ obviously was very tight with the Sublime crew, and we got a lot of shows with them at Long Beach and San Diego back in the day, and it was it was great for us. You know, we we hardly played any shows, and we hear all these crazy stories about Sublime. It was huge then, how Bud the drummer would get so drunk he'd be playing and I'd puke it in a bucket. I got to see it first. Are these true stories? Yes, that's how they were all the kids loved it. Oh, we're huge Sublime fans. So that's interesting. Oh, it was, it was awesome. Played, we got to do a handful of shows in the early days, and then when they did their third album and really went big, we didn't see them again. Oh, okay. And tragically, we were just starting the tour. We were in San Francisco when we heard that Bradley passed away. Oh, yeah. So it was the end of that. Scene. Now you guys were with a major label at that time, weren't right? you? Jive, yeah, actually the largest independent label. Uh, I see. Time, yeah. That was a great experiment in that they were a hip hop label looking to break into the rock world. Huh? We were a, a rock band, we did a lot of hip hop, who had a singer and a rap, so it seemed like a marriage made in heaven. Your crossover. And then right as we got signed, they signed Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, and Sync. Pushed us off into a little RV and decided they didn't want to break into rock anymore, they were going to focus on pop. So they they treat us well in that they for money and those people but they never really got behind us. You know, what if they moved on to different things? There's, there's changes in the music industry. They, they went <laughs> to where the money was. Screw you know. off, fellas. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, those kids are, we're just at the kids' table right yeah, now. Like, oh, wait, let wait, the adults ask, talk right let now. Let the adults talk. Yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm a guitarist, so I'm really interested in Jackson. You have to trust me, I have nothing interesting to say. I want to hear about your equipment. I want to hear about your equipment. What are you playing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, this is going to be so boring for everybody. Not for guitarists. Okay, got you. All right, well, the love chicks love hearing about your equipment. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. I play has guitars. I use Marshall KMP1 preamp. I use egg meter heads and cabinets. And uh, I don't know if there's other stuff. Uh, boss pedals. Uh, so you, use, don't, uh, you don't use a big digital um, pedal, you use actual stomps? I do have stomps. I have a MIDI uh, control. <laughs> I already feel like a door. Just, I can just feel <laughs> I can feel my I mean, nerd our audience energy our audience just totally musicians. killing the vibe. You guys are going off with the sublime thing. It was all cool. Know. She's like dancing they around. Now. now I'm like, well, yeah, I got to use the MIDI moves. It's a Tech 21. She's just like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the clothes start coming back <laughs> on. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> all right. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> what? Oh, God. Wait, how do you recover from that one? Okay. We'll go back to the sublime stories after oh, this. Yeah, great. You look great. Tell them about your pedals and shit and you know, <laughs> stuff that kids find interesting. Now let me talk. Let's talk about active versus passive wiring. Okay. okay. You guys Actually, listen. I need to listen. know about that. <laughs> he needs to know. I need to know. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I just kind of go with the basic stuff. I, you know, I, I got the basic uh, delays. You bought some Marshall. Yeah, it's a Marshall preamp, and that's got all my 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 you know stored tones and all that stuff. So that's solid state Marshall preamp. 
It's a well. It's a it's a it's a two man. <coughs> okay. Cool. I, I stop smiling. I said two. <laughs> that's what it was. Okay, so the kids' <laughs> table <Yeah>. is. <laughs> I, I love how I get to stay at the kids' table yeah, the whole to time. I don't have to, you know, associate myself with anything other than the kids' table. We over here eating macaroni and cheese. They were having turkey and stuffing, yeah. you know? I we had the little that. sippy cups over here and over there. This is all adult clothes. swim. It's, it's all great. great. It's all I love good. it. Good. It's great. Good. Good. And, uh, yeah, did you, I came in late to the interview. Did you already ask you about their influences? I'd like to hear some more about... Uh, I didn't get to that yet. Okay. Well, We're too busy know. nerding out over here uh, talking about. No, but uh, what are your we, we like the science of guitar too. Don't let me interrupt. Pa- pass it around. Let's, let's see your influences. What, oh right, right. Well, I, I, Why are you playing? I always got into like uh, Alice in Chains. <laughs> God, God damn it, dude! Come on, what who's was that? Who threw that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Son of a bitch. That's okay. His turn is coming. I always got into bands like uh, you know <laughs> Bananarama and. Uh, yeah, you in the know, 90s. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was, yeah, I was really into them, and, uh... That's when you were into where those go. <laughs> oh, you found those? <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, how did you find those? They were in your backpack. I left those here they last time I was here. here. <laughs> <laughs> these are actually very sticky. I don't know why this w- is. W- 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 I'm gonna go ahead and put that right I on. Think these, uh, I think these would fit me nice. <laughs> this, this is great. This is great. Yeah, right here. Let's stay, bro. I mean, how are you really supposed to? <laughs> how are you really supposed to continue with that? I don't know. <laughs> You mentioned Alice in Chains, Megadeth, Stone Temple Pilots, you know, uh, yeah, oh, Metallica. I like the Metallica's really good too, I enjoy that stuff as well, um, I don't know. 